All right, so let's get started, shall we? There were some VHS tapes, miniseries called The Fire Next Time, which stars Craig T. Nelson and Bonnie Bedelia, as well as Richard Farnsworth and a few other actors and actresses. This is based... It sounded kind of, kind of interesting. I like Craig T. Nelson, and this is like a film that deals with an like ecological disaster movie that the greenhouse effect happens and temperatures raise to the extremes and it's in a way kind of like a, an opposite of the day after tomorrow um but I'm curious about it but I love it says in 2017 the fabric of society has been torn apart and one family will need all of its strength to survive so I'm like 2017 that's two years away folks we might be heading for the fire next time probably not but I don't know when I'll get around to seeing this, but I have it, and I can give it a look sometime, but yeah, fire next time. Then I have a couple flicks right here, VHS, The Bad Seed, I've heard, I've heard a lot of good things about this, this is supposedly a classic film, so now I have it, now I can give it a look sometime, and now there's a remake, and technically... It's an orphan, kind of like the Bad Seed, and then there's like that movie, uh, what the hell is the name of that movie? Godsend? Not the other Godsend, not the one with Robert De Niro, I think. Um, this guy, there's another Godsend movie from the 80s that has a similar plot to the Bad Seed. And then I got one of Jim Carrey's first films, Rubber Face, and no, I did not pay 10 bucks for it. I only paid nine, nine. I didn't pay nine, ten dollars. I paid a dollar. So, rubber face. It's probably terrible, but it's for the collection. So if I ever do a Jim Carrey month, I can talk about that. Now before I get to the Blu-rays, I'm going to talk about some box sets that I got. Batman. Batman. I am so glad 20th Century Fox and Warner Brothers finally were able to basically put their differences aside and get this classic show on DVD and Blu-ray. I don't have the Blu-ray because the Blu-ray is insanely expensive. And this has the same features as the Blu-ray, except for, what, some extra goodies like a Hot Wheels, Batmobile, and a few other things, but pretty much the same features. You get all the you get the entire series, and if you have a good Blu-ray player, just up convert your DVDs anyway to Blu-ray quality, so you're not really missing much. So if you want to get this show and you have a Blu-ray player that's gonna already up convert to Blu-ray to HD quality, get the DVD set for cheap. Does it get this for cheap? I got this for like sixty bucks. That's cheap. The Blu-ray itself is like what? 200 or it's down to 189 or 130 something now and even the DVD like the cheapest Amazon was paying was was giving you for it when it went on sale recently was like what 90 so yeah I got this for 60 bucks off of half.com which is an eBay kind of an eBay offshoot site now if I can get this stuff out of here comes with a booklet it talks a little which is basically an episode guide there's nothing no fascinating behind the scenes stuff here just an episode guide and then it tells you what the features are so you have a, the bonus disc you have a featurette about the memorabilia um, you have a featurette about hanging with Batman <clears throat> featurette called Batmania Born Building the world of Batman, Bats of the Round Table, Inventing Batman in the words of Adam West, na 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 Batman, Bat Rarity straight from the vault. So, so there's a good amount of features on here. And then you have Season 1, which has Burgess Meredith on the front, on the cover here. Then Frank Gorshin on the back as the Riddler. The five disc set. Every episode. From season one. Here's season two, which is a pretty long season. So here's Ju this is Julie Newmar's Catwoman on there. Then you have King Tut, 
who I forgot who the guy the guy who played him was. But I know that's uh, Vincent Price as Egghead. I forgot who played Mr. Freeze. Because that's Mr. Freeze right there. And um, this is a yeah, this is a big set. This has eight discs. Eight discs. For season two. It's the longest season. And then you have Season 3, which you have uh, Cesar Romero. Cesar Romero is a Joker on there. Cover. And you have these two villains, which I don't remember their names. Then you have... Uh, is it Yvette Mimiu? Is that her name? I, I don't think that's right. I could be completely wrong. But Batgirl. And um, I've heard some things about the set. That like there's some of the bumpers are missing or whatever. There's something... Little minor something missing on some of the discs that doesn't bother me at all I don't care if some of the bumpers are missing so I'm perfectly fine with the set that I have so and I'm, I don't need a replacement disc or anything like that but I'm just thrilled to have this because I have a lot of good memories watching this show um, Batman growing up um, I check out reruns of my grandmother and we we had something that we would share enjoyment of I remember seeing reruns of this on Sci-Fi Channel when it used to be called Sci-Fi Channel and actually a good channel. And then I also remember seeing reruns of this on TV Land and then they stopped doing reruns and then I haven't seen any episodes of this show for the longest time. But I did have really fun, fond memories of watching this show growing up. So I'm really glad to have this set. Now another Batman show that I had really fond memories watching growing up is this. Batman, the complete animated series. Now, this is actually a really cool looking set. Okay, so you have it's reflecting everything off of. Do you see my computer screen? I'm trying to make it so you don't see the reflection. There you can see a little bit of the art there. See a little bit of the art here. And even like on the edges here, so you can take this off, and even on the inside, I mean, look at that. That's pretty cool. And then you, then on the edges here, you have the bat symbol. And then of course, then it's pretty much clear, there's nothing on the back. And then you open it up, and this is definitely a labor of love, this is a really cool set. can't really seem to get the right lighting on this so you can see it okay it's something like that okay that's good and this is a set that I got up eBay that this guy basically was saying oh it wasn't what I thought it was it wasn't what I wanted and I'm like well fine <laughs> I'll, I'll take it then I'll take it from you this is the booklet that taught that there's a little bit about a little bit of info but not a lot, but mostly it's an episode guide. And talking about special features and then matte paintings from the show. I have really fond memories watching this show growing up too. Mainly not when it aired on Fox originally. I'd probably say I remember vague memories of the adventures of Batman and Robin when I was a kid catching that on Saturday mornings. But mainly the most the biggest memories I have from this show are watching reruns on Cartoon Network around six o'clock at night or something or a little bit later than that in the evening after I get back from school um, that's what I have the biggest memories of and that intro just the intro for the animated series is always just gives me chills every time with the lightning and just every the way it's set up it's just awesome now this set, Volumes 1 and 2 are in one set right here. So you have pretty much the best animated series based on a comic book of all time right here. For me personally, the best. The first two seasons are the best Batman adaptation to date. I love the first two seasons that much. I'm really looking forward to revisiting these sometime. And then the last the last two seasons, the third season starts to go downhill. 
and then the the last episode I mean the last season is is pretty weak to be honest but it has its moments but mainly I really didn't like the animation change where they went from this animation to this really I don't understand why they did this to this this beady eyes and was it a budget thing I don't know and the glue just came off on this this uh, set so on parts three and four so I guess I'll have to re-glue it or something or I'll just be careful but anyway that's Batman the animated series the complete series this is a thing that was on the back of it that showed pretty much what happened now I do have Batman Beyond but that's in storage so I don't really have it at the moment but I really do want to get that again too because I have great memories of Batman Beyond as well I'd say Batman the animated series is the first two seasons anyway are my all-time favorite cartoon so yeah I love the first two seasons of Batman the animated series so that's it for the box sets both Batman related now we're getting to some DVDs, and we'll get some Blu-rays, and then I'll be done. But anyway, here's Jack's back. Now, this isn't an official cover. This is a cover I printed off the internet, because I got the overseas release that has this shitty cover art, which makes it look like a Jack Ketchum novel or some fucking just shitty. So I went with the VHS cover art that I found online somewhere that I used for my custom DVD before I got this. And I put it in here. So I had better cover art for a film that deserves a release in the United States and it deserves a Blu-ray release remastered. Because this is the best quality I've ever seen the film in. This DVD. But it could be better because there's the print the print that they were using has seen better days. There's scratches and, and dots and all kinds of stuff all over it. It's watchable, but it definitely could be a lot better. So clean it up. Clean up Jack's back and get it on Blu-ray. Kino Lorber, go for it. Um, I think I think Shout Factory still has an agreement with Paramount. Get get a hold of Paramount and get Jack's back on DV, in DVD or Blu-ray. Get it on Blu-ray already, Shout Factory. Fucking New Year's Evil, really? New Year's Evil or Stigmata? Stop taking every movie that MGM released that's remotely horror related and look into what Paramount has. And try to get the rights to Jack's back and get it on Blu-ray. At this point, if it doesn't have a ton of features, I'll be okay with that. Because at least I'll have it on Blu-ray. And at least people in the United States can buy it. Who have Blu-ray players. But anyway, it's, it's kind of upsetting. But interestingly enough, I got doubles of this. Because I ordered this through an Amazon UK package, but it came like way late. So I ordered a replacement package. I got that before I got the got the replacement package real quick. But then I got the late package afterwards. So I have a double of this. So if anyone has a region free player, if they're from the UK and they don't have a copy of Jack's back, message me and maybe we can work something out. Because I have a double, and I I I need to do I there I I can sell it. Um, pretty much, I think maybe an asking price, maybe about ten bucks, if if that'll work out. But if not, it's cool. But I do have a double, so message me in a personal message about it if you want the uh, want the uh, double of Jack's back. It's not gonna have this cover art. It's gonna have the shitty Jack Ketchum cover art, but it's gonna have the movie. And it's unopened and it works and so yeah so I have a double of that and I also have a double of another blu-ray but I'll talk about that when I talk about the blu-ray but anyway Jack's back and then I have the vanishing and black widow double feature the vanishing is a remake by George Soucier who also directed the original vanishing and I actually like the remake more with Kiefer Sutherland and Jeff Bridges um, I think it has a more satisfying ending, and I, I just think it's a better film for me personally. So 
And I do have the first film, though. I do have that, but I don't have the case for it. So, so one of these days, I'll get around to reviewing that and the remake. And Black Widow, I've heard about, but I've never seen with Deborah Winger. So, I was glad to get this. This is pretty cheap, too. So, I was glad to get this double feature set. Now, this is a film directed by Wim Wenders called The End of Violence. This is a movie I have on VHS, and I'm glad to upgrade this to DVD because I've been curious about this film. Now, this cover art's shitty. Really is the VHS is a little bit better. The idea I liked it deals with um, so what happens if the world ends up making surveillance systems mandatory all over the place and it becomes there's some corruption that goes on and Bill Pullman ends up getting sucked into it and I just I, from the trailer I thought it looked interesting and I like I like Bill Pullman and Wim Wenders can be a good director. Um, it's very talented, but there are a lot of his films just aren't everybody's cup of tea, but still glad to have this. End of violence. Now here's a film that apocalyptic movie that I think is a bit overlooked. The Seventh Sign with Demi Moore. Um glad to have this one because I remember this being pretty chilling and pretty creepy in its own right. Now it's not a great film. I remember it being pretty good, above average. But I haven't seen it in a long time, but I definitely wanted to get my hands on it because I remember enjoying it. I remember it being pretty good. Mainly for Michael Bean, for the Michael Bean collection. Or Michael Bine. Is that how you say it? Michael Bean or Michael Bine. I think it's Bine. I think that's what it is. Like Bine. I think it's Bine. Bine there, done that. But anyway, Bin. Michael Bin. Uh, but seventh slime. Then here's a special edition of The China Syndrome, another film I've heard good things about but I haven't seen, and this has two documentaries featuring interviews with Jane Fonda and Michael Douglas. This film is famous for predicting the Three Island Mi Three Three Mile Island meltdown, which actually occurred 12 days after the film was released, in a bit of really tragic irony. But um, yeah, I heard good things about it, so I want to give it a look sometime. Now I can. Body Double, a special edition. I haven't seen this in a while, but remember liking it. Good Brian De Palma flick. Um, this has four new featurettes on it. They're new for the time, which is 2006, but it has four featurettes on it. And um, it doesn't have a trailer, though. And uh, honestly, the cover art here is worse than the, the poster art. It doesn't have a commentary either, which I think the DVD has, which that's really weird. Or at least my laser laser disc has. And then got Manhunter. Actually, I didn't pay ten bucks for it from Blockbuster. I paid it, paid a uh, three from Goodwill. Um, enjoy this film. I have to agree with my friend uh, Matt Rambo Right for Life. This is also my favorite film of the Hannibal Lecter series. It's just very stylish, very slick, and um, honestly quite underrated nowadays. One of Michael Mann's, I think it's one of his first films. I think it's his first film, or one of his first, and one of his best, Manhunter. But I also have Silence of the Lambs. This is the first special edition. Um, so this has the Inside the Labyrinth documentary. But there's another two discs that was released later that I wouldn't mind getting my hands on that has even more features. But this has a decent amount of features, though. So, And I got this for free, because this is like by a certain amount of DVDs get one free thing at a, at a DVD shop. I got that a while back. Now, and I also got Hannibal. Got this for two bucks. Um, I remember this being okay, but I thought it was a bit long. And uh, I don't know, the tone was kind of conflicting, but I remember it being okay. But I haven't seen it in the longest time. But whenever I get around to reviewing these films, sometimes I'll give it a look. Hannibal. And uh, that's the two disc. And then I also got Red Dragon. Which I don't remember being that great. I remember it being watchable, but I just remember it being mediocre. Just Manhunter is a better film. I just rather watch Manhunter. And um, but I'm glad to have this from a collection. And no, I'm not getting Hannibal Rising. Not happening. The only way it's gonna happen is if I do get it for free. If it's one of those buy three get one free thing, and that's the one I get for free, then I got it for free. Or if someone sends it to me. Other than that, I'm not paying for it. Because that movie sucks. Then I got this, Circle of Iron, which is this is a two-disc Blue Underground edition. 
This is a film that um, Bruce Lee was working on before with uh, James Coburn and screenwriter Sterling Silifant before he passed away. And he was going to star in it, but eventually, of course, he passed away, so they had to find someone else, so they got David Carradine. And it's also known, I think, as a magic flute or something like that. This is a film that I've never seen, but I've heard things, good things. I haven't really heard good things about it, but I've heard things about it. And I wanted to, I think it's called The Silent Flute, not The Magic Flute. The Magic Flute, that that's H.R. Puffin stuff. Um, but this has features on it, and Blue Underground does a good job with, with special editions, so it was pretty cheap, so I was like, yeah, I'll get it for the features, Circle of Iron. This is a DVD I've had for a while, but I thought I'd show it anyway, because I got the other Wishmaster films, Wishmaster 1 and 2, Wishmaster 3, Beyond the Gates of Hell, and then Wishmaster The Prophecy Fulfilled, so now I have all the Wishmaster movies. There's a special feature on this one that is unbelievably stupid what it is is the wishmaster's guide to dating well, and i can't believe anybody wasted their time with this special feature so pretty much what happens is that's the 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 gin's guide to dating a question and answer session so there's a question and you click on you press select to click on what the answer will be and there's a pre-recorded message of the gin saying some stupid puns and you're like this is these are bad and this is just terrible and this is a special feature this is this is a special feature on this thing this movie sucks anyway so that just sums it right up shitty special features for a shitty movie this film though I don't think it's that shitty Casper I'm I had been wanting to revisit this anyway and I'm gonna be revisiting this fairly soon because I think it would tie in with the kids movies that I'm doing and I've been wanting to watch this again because I watched this a lot as a kid and I wanted to upgrade from my VHS and um, yeah I remember really enjoying this movie as a kid and I think as an adult I'll probably get even more jokes than I did as a kid but anyway Casper my opinion this is the best and the only good version of Casper because the rest of versions of Casper are just lame then I got this set for half off. It was like seven bucks at Goodwill because it was fifty percent off. And this is the Pink Panther film collection. I don't know why they use this type of baby book <laughs> case, but okay. And this isn't the complete collection because there are other Pink Panther movies, but these are the only ones that are worth a shit because these are the ones with Peter Sellers. Because all the other ones are with some shitty guy who just sucks. And, of course, the Steve Martin films, which are nowhere near as good as the originals. So this comes with The Pink Panther, Shot in the Dark, Pink Panther Strikes Again, Revenge of the Pink Panther, and Trail of the Pink Panther. And a bonus disc that I believe has some featurettes. And um, I think it has some cartoons as well. So, pretty good deal for half off for seven bucks. And... I was like, yeah, why not? Pink Panther series. Which I haven't seen these in forever. It's another thing, I, another series I used to watch with my grandmother, so I haven't really seen this in a long time. But I remember having some fun with them, though, so glad to have the Pink Panther series. This is a DVD of a movie that I really enjoyed. That um, I gotta say thank you to my good friend Matt who sent this to me. Shoot 'em up. Awesome movie. It's fast-paced, furious action, and the movie deserved a lot better in the box office. It's, it still deserves better, and um, glad I have I have a copy of this thanks to my good friend. Um, yeah, definitely one of my favorite action movies now. I really enjoyed this movie. This movie was awesome. Shoot 'em up. American Psycho, the uncut version. I haven't seen this film in ages. I got this from Goodwill. This has a bunch of features on it. Upgrade my VHS. So yeah, American Psycho. Two disc of 1408. Another film I haven't seen yet, but I've heard good things about. Uh, Stephen King adaptation. I've been waiting to get my hands on this until I found the two disc. And oh, here it is, the two disc. Found this good at Goodwill recently. Uh, this has the theatrical release. Then the second disc is the extended director's cut. It's an alternate ending commentary and some more features so 1408 
Got this case with two bucks. Wolf Creek. Trailer looked like it might be kind of interesting. I've heard mixed things. I've heard it sucks from some people. I've heard it's good. So I'll have to see for myself. And I know there's a sequel that came out recently. So whenever I get around to checking this out, I'll probably check out the second film. And I got this movie, Soul Survivors, which is directed by one of the guys who, Steve Carpenter, who direct and who directed The Kindred, along with uh, The Dorm That Drip Blood. I, I'm a pretty decent fan of their work. So I'm curious about this. Plus the cast. I mean, you got Casey Affleck, Wes Bentley, Elijah Dusku, uh, Melissa Sage Miller, and Luke Wilson. And this is a film that I guess is really shitty because it's one of the lowest rated horror films of the year 2001. Really one of the lowest rated horror film, lowest rated films of the year 2001. But it, I saw the trailer and it really didn't look that bad. So. Maybe the version that they saw was the theatrical version, because this is the version that's, I guess, the one that you weren't allowed to see on the big screen, so it's uncut. Um, but I definitely am curious about this, because I like Steve Carpenter. And um, so, yeah, and the trailer didn't look that bad, so I'll definitely give this a look sometime, Soul Survivors. But shit, it's shit. I will definitely be honest about that. Now, this film I'm really curious about. I'm glad I got my hands on this. The Thaw. This is kind of like the thing, but with Val Kilmer and a few other things, a few other actors and a few other things. Uh, it stars Martha McIsaac, Aaron Gashmore, Kyle Schmidt, Steve Song, Val Kilmer. It's one of those ghost house underground films. I saw the trailer for it and it had some practical effects and it, there was a little bit of CGI, but I thought the plot looked interesting. Um, Val Kilmer plays a renowned environmental advocate called Dr. David Kruipin. He, when he discovers the carcass of a woolly mammoth, mammoth in a polar ice cap. He then leads a team of four bright ecology students on a research mission at a remote Arctic station. The group uncovers information beyond their wildest dreams and nightmares when a, paras pre when a prehistoric parasite revives and searches for a new warm-blooded host. Now infected, the unsuspecting students are forced to choose between a quarantine that will result in their demise or a global epidemic. So... Yeah, I thought it looked pretty decent, so I'll definitely give this a look sometime. The Thaw. And I got the Rush Hour films in a three pack. It's like for five bucks, it's a pretty good deal. Upgrade my VHS tapes <laughs> of the first two, and this they all they all have the same features as the other discs did too. So Rush Hour collection for whenever I decide to watch those films, whenever that may be. A film called The Hunt. Directed by Fritz Kirsch, who directed Children on the Corn. Supposed to be like Predator meets Blair Witch Project. And I mainly got it because it, the idea of it sounded interesting. And you also have um, Robert Russler in it, as well as Cliff D. Cliff D. Young. But I saw the trailer, it looked pretty shitty. So I would not be surprised that this is a pretty shitty movie, actually. Because the trailer didn't inspire me. I got this film, which I have dumb fun with stealth you won't believe how hard it was for me to find the damn widescreen special edition I finally found this widescreen special edition two disc after a bunch of searching I finally found it at a goodwill every time I'd find it it's in full screen until now so I'm finally I have the widescreen special edition of stealth so whenever I review something like blue thunder I'll give this a look again Three pack of The Walking Tall films. This has a feature read on it um, about a documentary about the series. It also has a behind the scenes vintage feature read about the final chapter of Walking Tall, which is the third film, which I saw, which is kind of interesting. It's an interesting oddity. Um, I didn't know they made featurettes way back as far as 1977, um, especially for a film like Walking Tall, final chapter. But the first one stars uh, Jonah Baker. Second film, the second and third film star Bo Svensson, based on a true story of Buford Pusser. And um, give these a look sometime. This is for the collection. Shout Factory does a good job with these special editions. And this I actually got for free because I buy a certain amount of uh, DVDs, get get something for free. And this is a box set with the French Connection one and two. So this comes with the five-star collection of the first film. 
which has a bunch of features on it, and then this second film, which is pretty underrated, which is actually a pretty good movie, which, to be honest, nobody, you don't really hear very, very many people talk about French Connection 2 in regards to good sequels. Blu-ray taken, so I can give this a look, along with the sequel, and the third film, which I hear suck, Tango and Cash Blu-ray, which is another thing that I got from my good friend Matt. Thank you. Definitely want to watch this again any, sometime anyway. My favorite buddy cop movie. Love Tango and Cash. Captain America. Winter Soldier. My favorite Marvel movie. I'm serious. My favorite Marvel movie. I really love this movie. Huge fan of Captain America. And this movie was just exceeded my expectations and then some. And I haven't done a review yet because I wanted to watch it again and then review it when I watch the first film. Review that again. And, yeah, maybe watch the 70s Captain America movies again in the 1990 film. Why not? So, but I don't know when that'll be, but definitely will give this another look sometime. This will definitely be on my list of my favorite films of 2014. Steelbook of Demons and Demons 2 from Arrow Video. Pretty rad, actually. This has some features that aren't on the Synapse release, but then Synapse has some features that aren't on this release. So, yeah. But, it was on sale from Zobby, so I got it. And, um, give these looks sometime. Give these films a look sometime. Demons and Demons 2. This is the Blu-ray that I have a double of. The Fury. Brian De Palma's The Fury, very underrated movie, great soundtrack by John Williams. This predated Scanners by three years, and it still doesn't get as much praise. It needs to be talked about more. And this is on the Fangoria 101 Most Unheralded Horror Films list, which sometime in the future, I'm announcing it now, I'm going to finish that. And I'm talking about sometime this year. I'm going to start from the letter A... All the way to the letter Z with that Fangoria book, and I'm going to watch and review every single one of those movies. 101 movies. It's going to happen. I've been wanting to do that for the longest time, to finish it anyway, and I'm going to start over and I'm going to finish it this time. Because I'm going to have a lot of free time in the future, because after this term at a college, I'm only going to have one class that I'm taking. So I'm going to have, like, only class a couple times on Tuesdays and Thursday nights and then the rest of the time rest of the week I'm gonna have off so I'm gonna have plenty of time to not only balance my studies and my math class and also watch and review a shit ton of movies so the Fury is one of those films I believe and this has a lot of features and it's good blu-ray and if if you're in the UK and if you like this movie uh, send me a PM Send me a PM with how much you you were willing to part with for it. Because I'd rather sell this to somebody that I know or somebody who subs to me rather than do some random eBay thing, somebody I don't really know. I'd rather give this the double that I have to somebody that I know that will appreciate it. But anyway, just send me a PM if you want it. Let me know what price you're willing to pay, so to speak. Anyway... This is the Blu my Blu-ray of the Fury. Then I got another Arrow Video release, The Ranged. This is the uncut version. It also has a bunch of features. It also has a DVD copy in it. So yeah, The Ranged. Screen box set, Blu-ray set with all three films and two documentaries, Still Screaming, Scary Movie Retrospective, which is 93 minutes long, and then Scream the Inside Story, which is 90 minutes, plus, I think, some of the same features that were on the other DVD, in the best picture quality, I believe. Maybe they don't have the same features. It doesn't look like they list these features on the Blu-rays. Maybe I should keep my DVD set. I'll check into that, but I do have Scream 4 on DVD. I don't need it on Blu-ray. I'm fine with having it on Blu-ray. I'm fine with having it on DVD. I know somebody wants me to review these sometime. I will get around to it. I just don't know when. I'm already behind in terms of reviews, so and requests and and stuff that people send me. So sent me. So, Ugh. 
get to it when I get to it. Poltergeist set. I love this movie. I hate this Blu-ray. I hate this fucking shitty no features. Fuck you, Steven Spielberg. You suck. Yeah, Steven Spielberg, where are you? I know you're listening here. Fuck off, Steven. Fuck you, Steven Spielberg. Fuck off, Steven. Smuck. But I'm still glad to have the film on Blu-ray, because I love the movie. It's one of my favorite films. So, expect when the new film comes out, which is sometime in the summer, re-reviews of the first film, the second movie, shitty cover art, that just blind you here. Shitty cover art. No features. And the third film. Which I had to remove my rant. Because some asshole would not let it go. When it came to me. Basically swearing and being. Give, tearing the movie apart. Like I just wouldn't give up. And made multiple accounts to give me shit. So. I decided you win. I don't want to deal with your bullshit. So. Yeah. Another Arrow video release, special edition of the car, film that I'm curious about. I will be checking this out sometime. This has a decent amount of features on it. Um, making of the Mechanical Monsters with the special effects artist William Aldridge. Audio commentary director Elliot Silverstein, moderated by Callum Waddell. Um, introduction trailer commentary by director and car fan John Landis, which is one of the trailer for, trailers from Hell segments, an Easter egg, uh, little collector's booklet, John Rubenstein recalls becoming a victim of the car, so there's nothing like James Brolin or anything, or so there's features, which is better than nothing, which the Anchor Bay release has, which is out of print, but it is the best quality of the film you will ever see, but it's not as many features as you probably maybe would have wanted. But it's better than nothing. I'm still glad to have this. So, the car. I also have the novelization of this film, which is I always remember. Kind of funny thing about it. It has. It has a cigarette ad in it. Only in the 70s will your books have ads for cigarettes in them. Motel Hell. Now this is the Arrow video release. This has some uh, features. This has. This has most of the features that are on the release from. Here's a collectible booklet. Is what it looks like. Has most of the features that are on the other set from Screen Factory, but Screen Factory also has some features that aren't on here. But it was cheap, so that Screen Factory one was more expensive. So I was fine with getting this one. And if you wanted to see the other booklets for the other. Uh, or what the discs look like, and that's the car. This is what the booklet looks like for the car. A little bit more behind the scenes stuff in the booklet. Arrow Video does an amazing job, that's all I gotta say, really. Arrow Video, since I have a region free player, is my favorite Blu-ray DVD releasing company. By far. If you have a region free player, they are amazing. So, they do a great job with the looks of their sets, they have a great job with features, booklets, a lot of cool information in them, great, great quality. They do a good job remastering their products. That's what the Fury looks like. Cover. I mean the cover of the booklet. Demons. Just a little car, little tiny booklet. Nothing really big, but I think this is one of the earlier sets they released. Then we have another era video release of Dress to Kill. This is loaded with features. I mean, this has. Interviews with Nancy Allen, interviews with Angie Dickinson, um, interview with the producer, um, commentary track, I believe. Does it have a commentary track? 
No, I don't think it has a commentary track. It has a bunch of other features, though. A uh, feature-length documentary on the making of the movie. And this is all stuff that's not on the the uh, American Blu-ray release. This is the best version of the film you can get of this classic suspense thriller, Dress to Kill, from Brian De Palma. And then here's another uh, gift from my good friend Matt sent me Blue Grave Towering Inferno. So thank you. I, be I have this one on VHS, but now I can upgrade it. I think I also have it on. D no, I think Volcano. No, Volcano. The 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 two disc that I have of Volcano, I think also has Towering Inferno on it. But um, now I have it on Blu-ray. This has all the same features that the DVD has. So yeah. Definitely enjoying that. Got to watch that sometime. When I get around to watching some of the stuff my friend Matt sent me, which is a shit ton of stuff. So I got to say thank you, Matt. It, I, I really, sometimes there's no, there really aren't very many words I can really put to describe how thankful and grateful I am for all the stuff you sent me and for being such a great friend. Then here's the Blu-ray of Phenomena, Dario Gento's film, aka Creepers. This is the best version of the film you can get, hands down. The Anchor Bay DVD was pretty, was okay, but this has a lot more features. This has a, a 50 minute long documentary that isn't on there, and this is this has a Blu-ray. Um, this is the Blu-ray release of the film. There's also a DVD, but yeah, great movie. Phenomenon. Glad I have the Blu-ray. So this is the only Dario Argento film I have on Blu-ray at the moment, because the other ones I have in my collection are on DVD. And sometime I want to get around to doing that as well, a Dario Argento month, because I've honestly been wanting to do that. Watch all of the Dario Argento films I have, but I haven't gotten around to doing that either. Now, here's a Blu-ray of The Stuff. And this has new high-definition restoration of the film, it's got can't get enough of the stuff, a making of documentary, which is about 52 minutes, which is pretty cool. So it has a making of documentary, it has a trailer from hell, but it does not have the commentary that the DVD has. So if you're into commentaries, you probably want to would want to keep the DVD because from Anchor Bay, because it has a commentary Larry Cullen that this release doesn't have. But sometime I'm going to review this because I have this stuff. If you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you. This is a, one of the best gifts I could probably say I've ever gotten from a good good friend on YouTube named Corey Foster. Named Corey. And uh, he sent me this stuff. The real thing. This is a real prop. Signed by Larry Cohen. Which is... I, this is just without a doubt one of the best gifts I've ever had and yeah they sent me a bunch of other stuff too autographs I think Brad Dourif autographed and uh, I'm one of with uh, what's his name from Monster Squad and um, I was getting confused with Fred Ward <laughs> and he even the guy the actor himself even let Stephen Mott so yeah the stuff see I have this stuff so I definitely need to get around to reviewing the stuff sometime. Real prop from the film too, so it's just it's amazing and thank you, Corey. If I haven't said that enough already. Beast Within, Arrow Video release. This is better than the Screen Factory release. Once again, they just kicked Screen Factory's ass. There's a few times Screen Factory ends up outdoing them, but rarely. And even if they do end up out doing them, it's only by a slim margin because they have a little bit more features that the other set doesn't have. This has a in-depth featurette um, with interviews with a bunch of people from the film, a new commentary of Philippe Mora. I think the Screen Factory release has a commentary that's not on here, but everything else this film has, even the booklet, it just just trumps the release from Screen Factory. Then here's uh, the last era video release I got, the Fun House. The Screen Factory release has a little bit more, I guess, but I'm okay with the, this. Like I said, it was pretty cheap. And um, yeah, Fun House. 
pretty much the same features as the Scream Factory release. And then to end this, Birdman. I know it's shocker. What? Can you believe it? Birdman. Mainly I got it because the first time I saw this, I saw in a really shitty HD rip, which is, wasn't really HD rip. It was a web rip, and the sound quality was horrendous. So, and if I'm going to watch this again, I should watch it in the best, best quality possible. And that's on a Blu-ray. And that's on the actual Blu-ray. And I don't actually honestly remember hating it, but I don't remember loving it, so I need to watch this again. So this will definitely be a review coming in the future. Is like I said, a re-review of Birdman, because I need to watch this again and then review the film directly after I watch it. So then my honest reactions are captured on film and not delayed reactions like a month later. So glad I have it. Even if I don't end up liking the film, I don't know what that was. Somebody's lighting off fireworks or somebody's shooting somebody. I don't know what the hell that was. If you heard that, that's kind of freaky, isn't that? Uh, but Birdman. <laughs> Say Birdman. And boom! Everybody starts exploding. But I will definitely give this a fair shake. And even if I don't end up loving the film or even really, really, really liking it, I'm still going to keep it for the collection from Michael Keaton. Because I'm still going to love his performance. John Wick. That's it. That's all I have to say. That's how we end this with John motherfucking Wick.